Who forced the British Empire to give up slavery? Uh, there was a battle in between the people. No, there? who, sorry, who forced the British Empire to give up slavery? Well, to start off, there was no one to force them. Thank you. And who exactly forced the barbarers of North Africa to give up slavery? Well, it was agreements between the No, it wasn't. Americans. It was done by the Americans and they did it by blowing the no, at Tripoli. Really. And I absolutely have no respect for any Muslim argument that tries to play that down or tries to justify it, it is identical to if some Belgium apologist turned to you as a Congolese and said that what the Belgian king did in Congo was justified. The reality is, Mohammed bought and sold slaves. Mohammed traded two black slaves for an Arab one. He gave a slave as a gift to his own daughter, a human being as a gift. Now notice, they're rattled now. We have forgotten what has happened in European history. What has happened, all you remember is what the Liberals tell you, and the Liberals teach you a filtered history that encourages you to be embarrassed and ashamed of who you are. Because it's based upon the idea of privacy yeah. and of maintaining a person's privacy and you yeah. can't get from privacy to abortion. Yeah. But now, but the point is, but it, that, the point is, the point is, in the American system, you see even the American human made system is better than Islam. Because in the American system, you have judges that are identified by the state to be judges. But I challenge you, right? So, so I'm saying that I would rather live under the American man made system than under Sharia law because in the American system they identify who is to be a judge but under Sharia law what is your criterion for deciding who is a scholar to follow? Show me Quranically... Hold on, hold on, you're conflating two things. You, one, with one breath you talk about judges and then you talk about scholars. A judge is not necessarily an Islamic scholar. A, a, judge, a, a judge in the American system is a scholar of the law. No, 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 I understand that. Right, but so... An alim yes, is yes. not a qadi. Granted, but granted, that's, that's two granted. So, but the, 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 okay, so tell me within the Islamic system how you identify who is the alim to follow. Oh, it's, it's a lot to do with where you're from, it's a lot to do with like access to, to scholarship. Now, show me the criterion in the Quran or in the Hadith, yeah. because I am saying that a fundamental flaw of Islam is that you have a circular reasoning about who you identify as your scholars and those scholars have a disproportionate just, influence over what no, the community no, I, I, believes. I just, I just told you that it's to do with where you're from and it's to do with the, the, the access that you have to knowledge. So for example, because there is an assumption in the Quran that the scholars are agreed upon by the people. So this is one aspect. The other aspect is that, and you know this quite well, that there is a tradition that we trace back all the way to the Prophet Muhammad So for example, the reason why the majority of people, geographically speaking, are Hanifis in Southeast Asia and Southern Asia, yep. is to do with the fact that their, their, their uh, companion who had migrated to that region has influenced greatly that region and his ideas have influenced it. and then obviously it's moved and then you have the Hanifi strand you go to the east coast of Africa you have the Malikis why again because of historical events that took place and the early Muslims who came there so it's, it's very similar to like uh, Christianity with can, can I can know it's not it's really not because within the Christian faith we have, they have this idea of apostolic succession so there is a clear succession of I just bishop. That to you. No, no, no. You you haven't explained any criterion. I've which told it, you. No, I didn't interrupt you. Don't no, interrupt you, me. Don't. You, no, you no. Cut me off. You did cut me no, off. No, I wasn't even finished. I, I, sorry, I thought you had finished. Yeah. If there's something you want to add, add. But I, I'm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll let you finish and then I'll reply. Sure, sure. So what else do you want to add on to what you were yeah, saying? Well, so based upon that, there is a clear lineage that uh, and that's different. It's like a tree and there's different branches yeah, of that yeah, lineage. Yeah. But if you trace them back, they all go back to the Prophet Muhammad. And Muslims tend to be in between that umbrella. Okay. Of, can I reply? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm, I still haven't seen any criterion. What I've heard is an opinion, what I've heard is a conjecture, and what I've heard is a description of a historical process. 
and I have no dispute about, I mean, I do have disputes about the historical process, but for the moment, to progress the argument, I'm just going to allow it. Yeah. But my, my point to you is that in the Christian faith, there's a very clear explanation of how leadership is passed forward. The apostles gathered in the book of Acts to choose the replacement for Judas, and they laid hands upon his replacement. And, that co and then that has continued down through the centuries. We can identify bishops and the seats of the bishops and who sat in those seats of the bishops. If you go to Cairo in Egypt, you can trace it all the way back from the current Pope, Taudros III, right back to, or Taudros II, right back to Mark. And you can see who has sat in that seat all the way through. By, and, and, and it's biblical, it's based on apostolic tradition. What I'm asking you, is to show me the criterion by which you can justify having a Sunni scholar over, say, a Shia scholar. What is the criterion by which you can decide to follow a Sunni scholar and not a Shia scholar? Do you, I will answer, but yeah. um, I, I want to ask you a question. Do you follow Eastern Orthodox Christians? I'm just a Christian. Okay, but there are Eastern Orthodox Christians. Yeah, they're Christians as well. Yeah, but do you follow any of their scholars? I, I, I'm, I'm just a Christian. Okay, I understand that, that you're yeah. just a Christian. The same way I'm just a Muslim, but like, there are, if, if you're not following, then there's plenty of people who follow them, right? Yeah. Now, very similar, everything you said, just replace Islam with it, it's very similar. We had Sahabas, Apostles. So you have the laying on of hands? We had Sahabas and Apostles who were determining the leadership very early on after the Prophet passes away. It was disputed though. And that's where the schism happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a, some form of schism, a schism as well with um, uh, the, the Christian church. Can I reply to that point? Sure. Because the, the reality is that the reason why Islam schismed right at the very beginning mm is because Muhammad never gave any clear understanding of how leadership should be passed on. And so Sunni and Shia, right at the very start, have a disagreement about who should have been the rightful leader after Muhammad. By contrast, Christians don't have anything like their first schism until into the 4th or 5th century. And they don't have anything like another schism until the 11th century. So yeah. that, and then they don't have another schism after that until the 16th yeah. century. Yeah. And then within the Protestant Reformation, they're schisming every other week, yeah. you know. But, but the point is that because of our nature of how authority is passed forward, because Jesus made it clear how authority is passed forward through apostolic succession, the natural tendency of man to build his own personal empire didn't rupture the church until centuries after Christ, a millennia after Christ, and over a millennia after Christ. But in Islam, precisely because Muhammad failed as a leader to make it clear how he was to be succeeded, the rupture amongst Muslims was immediate. It was in the first generation, immediately amongst the people that had actually known Muhammad personally. And that is another example that Islam is not a religion from God, it isn't perfect, as Allah said it is, and Muhammad isn't a rightly guided prophet, as he claimed to be, because he, the division that has cost so many Muslim lives results from Muhammad's failure as a leader. May I respond? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, there's loads of assumptions that you're making and a bit of a like, historical... Um, um, some historical mistakes that you're, you, you're, you're clearly um, mentioning here, in particular to Christianity. So your claim was that Christianity has no schisms until the 3rd century and the next time in the 12th century, 16 and uh, 15 and 16. Well, there are schisms as well in Christianity uh, during the 9th century yes. uh, and, and, and before. Besides that, Christianity for the first 100 to 300 years is a religion that is under persecution. There's no official state that backs it. There's yep. no official state that Absolutely. promotes it. So yep. Christianity for a very long time uh, uh, survives uh, uh, persecution and, and prevails eventually. Thanks be to God. You know? And uh, 
it, this is quite uh, different to uh, Islam, where uh, there's a state that exists in Medina uh, that uh, has power over the Arabian Peninsula and exerts power that way and conflicts happens that way. And it's very similar to Christianity. When a state then takes it on, that we find that there seems to be a pattern that, um, again, uh, friction happens due to, to power struggles more, more than anything. But I, I wouldn't say that, uh, uh, that the succession, despite of its like, um, hurdles that it's, it's gone through, that it was um, a failure. I mean, just within like, the first three or four um, um, Khalifas, if you like, the people who were in charge, despite of like the problems that we're going through. Um, first of all, if, what? How do we actually measure failure and success? Because it certainly isn't through military victory. I know that's a, a, a classic narrative of Muslims that sure. Islam is true because look, we conquered the world, but that's such a rubbish. Yeah. The Nazis conquered huge portions sure. of the world. Napoleon sure. conquered sure. huge portions yeah. of the world. Yeah. Genghis Khan yeah. makes the Islamic Caliphate look yeah. like an amateur beginners rally yeah. of, of world tyrants. You know, because well, you can conquer land, doesn't prove that your religion yeah. is true yeah. because if that was true then we should all follow the religion of Genghis Khan yeah. who had singularly the largest land empire yeah. in history yeah. and has still to, to date has the largest land empire yeah. in history yeah. 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 so would, that so that's yeah. no proof of anything yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't personally use that either okay as, good as, expand as, Muslim yeah. logic yeah. propagated yeah. by lots of unthinking Muslims yeah. Who uh, want to boast from a place of pride and ego yeah. and ignores the fact that the entire Islamic world was ultimately conquered by Christian Enlightenment eventually, Europe eventually. eventually. Yeah, colonial. You know, and we dissected yeah. many a, a caliphate and destroyed I, many, a, many a caliphate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't and still use, do today. I would still I wouldn't, do today. I, I, the most recent attempt being ISIS, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use Christianity in that. In that, in that well, uh, no, no. In the medieval period, the, the Portuguese caused the collapse of. Um, the the caliphate that was based around Egypt I'm through a blockade to be proud through of. a blockade. I agree, it's yeah. not. I'm just responding to the ejaculations of overexcitable yeah. Muslim dai sure. that present this as some great achievement sure. Sure. when clearly yeah. it isn't. My my measure of achievement uh, stems in culture, you know. Right. So culture. shall I tell you what culture I think the measure of success is? I mean, from a Christian's point of view. If you if, if if I'm saying measure of, uh, of success in yeah. terms because you talked about leadership, right? I'm talking about the failure of, of Muhammad to yeah. say how he should be succeeded as yeah, leader, right? And leadership is is it's it's intrinsically uh, intertwined with the idea of uh, prosperity of of a state, if you like, you know, and and how the state prospers. And I feel like. Uh, um, conquest is like at the bottom of the list, honestly. It's but it's on the list for you? Yeah, partially, partially. But, yeah. but, but it's not something that I, I would uh, use to, to boast. You know, it's just something that happened. It would be culture, it would be culture. It, it, it would be um, uh, the way uh, cultures uh, uh, found their own way on how to interpret that very thing that they take on eventually. Mm -hmm. Not always uh, at the beginning, there is some form of resistance with yeah. the early um, conquered lands, but yeah. eventually um, very beautiful uh, cultures here, you know, spring off and we have like the poetry of Rumi and Shams and everything that uh, is a amalgamation of like Persian culture and Islamic culture and then it births something new. So you you recognise that as a Christian, I just point to the Byzantine Empire and go, hey, we got sure, all that. I'm, no, I would agree. We got all that. But more than, yeah. more than that, yeah. the achievement of the church was to go not only from a persecuted minority yeah. that managed to, through peace, good works, and through argument yeah. to convert its persecutors. Yeah. But even when that socio-economic and political system collapsed in the West, the church managed to re-establish a, a state, the Holy Roman Empire, yeah. um, from nothing. Yeah. You know, uh, so if we're talking, and then, and then through things like the Carolingian Renaissance, yeah. sure. recover yeah. so much of what was at risk of being lost, yeah. And so if we're talking about cultural achievements, 
I, I personally think that that's, you know, if that's your criterion, I think it's a very poor one. Right. Uh, it's a very poor one because all I do is point to the Byzantine Empire and the Holy Roman Empire, and I've got enough ammunition there to counter not, any achievement within the no, Islamic I'm, world. I'm, I'm not, I'm not but, measuring the two empires. Yeah. I'm, I'm just stating. But, what to I, you. but I was going to, I was going to come to finish. It's to, also to, arguably on who had to, more influence. So, I mean, so, it's, it's an argument that we can make here. But, yeah. So, so to yeah. land on my point sure. is that despite the fact that when we Christians converted the Roman Empire, we converted the whole of the Roman Empire. When we, um, quite brutally as well. In play, at yeah. times and in places, but you would yeah. be wrong and, and you would be mischaracterizing to say that it was all about brutality and force. There were definitely times that yeah. that happened. Yeah. Like when, for instance, Charlemagne fought against the Saxons, yeah. my ancestors. Yeah. He yeah. fought against them and thanks yeah. be to God, yeah. he stopped them because they were raiding his lands and taking slaves, yeah. just like Muslims were. And when he I mean, went, now, but the point is, the point is, too, well, the point is, yeah. the, the, the Islamic State for 1400 years has been a bastion of injustice and cruelty. For 1400 years, Christians were second class citizens. For 1400 years, Jews were second class citizens. For 1400 years, Islam, without a single break, practiced the idea of slavery and never once stopped it anywhere in the whole of the Islamic world. So for 1400 years, yes, you can point to the poems of, of, of Rushdie and, and other people that you mentioned. Rumi. But Rooney, sorry. But let's not forget the fact that Islam has, has been a bastion of evil and injustice for 14 centuries as well. Whereas Christianity by comparison, yes, we have evils that you can point to, like our practice of slavery. But as a Christian, I can point to regions, countries and continents where we stopped the slave trade, for instance. Where we restrained the hand of violence, for instance. Sorry, sorry. It's all right. Where we restrained the hand of violence, for instance. You know, the Byzantines preferred the idea of, of basically paying their enemies yeah. not to wage war yeah. rather than fighting. Yeah. Fighting for the Byzantium after yeah. the conversion to Christianity yeah. was a last resort, yeah. not a first resort. Yeah. Did you, are you aware of that? No, I'm just new to it. Yeah, to yeah because very yeah, th there were economic reasons for it as well. I mean, yeah. I, mean I don't want to say it was all spiritual, yeah. but in the Christian faith, yeah. if you committed the sin of violence, even as a soldier, you had to do penance. Even as a soldier, yeah, yeah, yeah. because we always understood that killing someone was killing someone imbued with the image of God, even if that someone was a pagan yeah. or a jihadi Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. So a soldier would do penance for fighting in wars and killing. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, and, 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 and you're, you seem to be someone who's very, like, you know, uh, aware of history, you know, and you, you know your history, right? And the same way you said to me, it would be like a mischaracterization to, to pinpoint and like mishaps that happen in Christianity. And you know what, I, I'll be even honest, I'll even go as far to say that on the surface it may look like Christianity, but usually it was like some other political motivations behind these atrocities. And like I would argue the same way that yeah you're right that there are certain things in this Islamic history that are very horrendous and very obnoxious and not humane that happen and are tragedies but then also there's a lot of like good that came out of it you know and I can pinpoint as well and That's I wouldn't amazing. dispute that right so I feel like in this conversation in particular we're kind of in the same boat so if there was like an atheist who wants to come but that's the point that I would made it right at the beginning is, yeah. is pointing to the good and the bad of, of our civilizations yeah. gets us nowhere. Yeah. What we need to look at is what does the religion teach? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, you know, the practice of slavery, for instance, is constituted clearly within the text of Islam as something yeah. that you can do yeah. and should do, yeah. especially to those captured in war. Yeah. That's undeniable. How so you... that's why for 1400 years, yeah. there was never an emancipation movement. Yeah. The only time there was an emancipation movement in the Islamic world is when Christian gunboats went to North African cities yeah. and bombed them into submission. Yeah. That was the only time that the Muslims gave up slavery. Yeah. Um... We Christians gave up slavery by choice 
We Christians had to force you to give up slavery. It was not choice, by the way. Sorry, who forced the British Empire to give up slavery? Uh, there was a battle in between the people. No, it? who? Sorry, who forced the British Empire to give up slavery? Well, to start off, there was no one to force them. Thank you. And who exactly forced the barbarers of North Africa to give up slavery? Well, it was agreements between. The, no, it wasn't. The it was done by the Americans, and they did it by blowing the. At Tripoli, no, no, there were, as did the French and the there British. Were, there were treaties between, actually. Done at gunpoint. There These was, were not negotiations, I, they were done at gunpoint. You're not, misrepresenting the history. I'm, I'm not. You are. People I, can check it for themselves. Yeah, they can. Go and look I'm, at the, the I'm, Barbary I'm, pirates. I'm so confident. And, I'm go not. and look at the American wars against the Barbary yeah, pirates. Yeah. You were forced to okay. give up slavery. You didn't do it by choice. Sure. So, and then also, whilst you're looking at those uh, battles, you, got, you come very, very uh, quickly to conclusion that the uh, Moroccan uh, kingdom, in fact, was the first country, not the European countries who were fighting against America, but a Muslim country that acknowledged the autonomy of the North American state. There were treaties that led uh, to the evolution of uh, uh, of like taken slaves, American slaves. They were like hostages, for example, in Tripoli and in and, and places like Fez. And the Americans were able to negotiate the freedom of these slaves via having alliances with the Moroccans. Um, what I wanted to say to you is this. It is true that uh, we can't necessarily look at the good and the bad that happens. Yeah. Uh, but are you, are you slavery because it's constituted in the yeah. Islamic text? So, yeah, thank you. So I want to come to something. You, I, I believe you have made assumptions. So you said constitution, constituted. What, can you explain to me what you mean by constituted? By, by what I meant by constituted is it is embodied. Embodied. As in, I can look at a verse in the Quran that legitimizes the, the buying and the selling of slaves, the use of slaves, the treatment of slaves. And therefore it is constituted, it is embodied in the text yeah. that you can have slaves. And that is the reason why for 1400 years Muslims practiced slavery. And the principal victim of the Islamic slave trade were Christians from Armenia, Christians from Eastern Europe, Christians from Western Europe, Christians from Georgia, Christians from uh, um, around the Middle East yeah. and Christians, for, uh, sorry, and Hindus and Buddhists. They were the principal victims of the Islamic slave trade. It's, um, One it's, million European Christians were taken as slaves in the Islamic slave it's trade. It's quite irrelevant for you to mention Christians because... I mentioned Buddhists and Hindus. Sure, or any other religions because with the same breath, have you not ever wondered, and this is documented, have you not ever wondered how uh, this seemingly perfect system was able to, uh, you know, uh, procure so many slaves out of Europe. Uh, you didn't procure them, you no. stole them well, from our families. May I finish? I'm allowing you. Sorry. Um, there is some strange reason, uh, such a, 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 a perfect system that exists uh, uh, between, uh, you know, the, you know the, the taking of slaves by the Ottomans in particular, why was that? Now, I came across this, uh, uh, what's it called? It was an autobiographical um, book uh, by a, uh, a former slave uh, who lived amongst the Muslims for a very long time and under the Ottomans. And it's like a historical account that he tells about. And, and that historical account was actually a trend that was taking place in the northern parts of New Europe the Scandinavian countries like uh, Iceland uh, and Denmark and all these places. Uh, he, uh, he, he tells a story on how he was captured by Christians. He was captured by Christians and was then sold to the Ottomans. So that's why I was saying that in a way it's kind of relevant to mention that because uh, the, 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 the order of the day was slavery. And some people were more involved in it. There was a uh, demand and what's the other word? Demand and supply, supply uh, uh, problem that existed in Europe. Uh, and, and, and there have, have been, unfortunately, many, many Christians were um, abjugated by Christians and then sold to the Can Ottomans. I reply to this? Sure. Because this, this kind of um, Islamic mythos that's 
being created to rewrite history. And it is based purely on apologetic. And it's based purely on apologetic because Muslims feel the sting of the criticism that Islam teaches slavery and therefore Muslims practice slavery for 1400 years and never had an emancipation movement, except when Christian gunboats forced you to stop. The reality is we don't need you to tell us our history. You're from the Congo, is that correct? Yes. Right, you know what the Belgians did to the Congolese. There's no point, you would never accept some Belgium apologist trying to justify the genocide that was committed against the Congolese people because you know your history as a Congolese. Well, believe me when I tell you, I'm a Christian. I know the history of how we were brutalized by Islamic armies that came into our towns crying out Allahu Akbar, killed our men, raped our women, desecrated our churches and kidnapped our children. And, and I absolutely have no respect for any Muslim argument that tries to play that down or tries to justify it. It is identical to if some Belgium apologist turned to you as a Congolese yeah. and said that what the Belgium king did in Congo was justified. It was a brutal, yeah. savage act and it went on for centuries yeah. and you did not stop it by choice. You were forced to stop it. You were beaten by us. We crushed your armies. We destroyed your empires. And then we forced you to abolish the slave trade. You did not do it by choice, by contrast. By contrast, we Christians also practiced a horrific slave trade for 300 years, maybe 400 years at a push. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Christians abolished slavery by their own choice. The British Empire chose to abolish slavery. There was no power on earth big enough to force them to do it. They did it on their own. The United States fought a war to abolish their own slavery. No one forced the United States to fight that war. They chose to do it. The French abolished slavery. No one forced them to do it. The Spanish abolished slavery. No one forced them to do it. No one forced the Italians. No one forced the Holy Roman Empire. No one forced Poland. No one forced Russia. They all did it because they recognized and they had continuously recognized that it was improper to keep slaves. Okay, and they did so because of Christian teaching, okay, because of the dignity of human beings, yeah. because of the dignity that the Christian faith teaches. Yeah. So my point to you is, because we're talking about, you were tr remember we got onto this because you were trying to talk about the glories of the Islamic civilization. And I said, well, I can point to the glories of the Byzantine and Holy Roman Empire, the Christian civilizations. Yeah. But then I said, let's remember that this is not about what good Muslims or bad Muslims did, what good Christians or bad Christians did. Yeah. It's about what the texts teach and allow. Yeah. And because the texts teach and allow the practice of slavery, yeah. Islam and the Islamic caliphates have for 1400 years been the bastion of an incredible injustice of man inflicting onto man. That's not true, but anyway. No, let me People can check for let, themselves. Let me, let me answer to what you're saying. So, first of all, when I mentioned to you that, so are you disputing that there weren't uh, movements of Christians who were taking other Christians as slaves? Are you disputing No, I'm not disputing that. Okay. What I'm pointing out is what you're not pointing out is okay. that Christians have always fought against slavery for 2,000 okay. years and have always sought to end slavery for 2,000 years. But you cannot point to me an emancipation movement that's 1,400 years old because there never was one in Islam. No, you're saying that Christian has fought 2,000 years. That's not true. I'll show you. We have, in, we have periods of... Anyway, I don't want to go into it. So that's the other thing. No, you've made a claim. Yeah, yeah, we no, now need to on, look at whether it's true or not. But you mentioned a lot of things, so obviously I have to respond to all of them, isn't it? Um, what was the other thing you were talking about? Oh, I forgot. So, coming, coming back to... Was there an emancipation movement in Islam? That's basically... No, there wasn't. No, but like, no, but this is what I'm trying to say. Before we even talk okay, about emancipation, in, emancipation or all these okay, things, sorry. they're not... They, these things didn't happen, like he was arguing, because of Christianity. They did. Solely. No. They did. What, what inspired William Wilberforce? Let me, let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Okay? 
these are not the reasons why these things happen solely. Yes, you're right in the sense that there was a Christian group of people who were, who realized that they had gone wrong, that the church had gone wrong yep. uh, about slavery and they were doing the utmost to change that. So the British Empire did not just decide to change their opinions, there was a struggle that led to that uh, decision to be made. Secondly, the reasons why the emancipation period happens is because of the social economical reasons uh, that, that were taking place. Slavery was not uh, as profitable any longer and as sustainable any longer to be maintained because the uh, Industrial Revolution came in and basically uh, slavery in a way became obsolete. That's why we have documentations of the English Empire, uh, the English Empire uh, paying a reparation to s former slave owners. Something that no Islamic Empire has ever done. Um, yes, I can give you examples. Uh, the, uh, because the former slave owners were, were losing, uh, ironically, on profit by having slaves. So the government said, look, let these slaves go, we will reimburse you. And the motivation there was not Christianity. Yes, there might be some influence of it, but the motivation was purely economical. You mentioned French. You said the French abolished slavery because the they were... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? No one forced them. Whoa. Who forced France them? France was, had colonized Haiti. Okay, let me finish, let me finish. You're gonna to have to listen to this. He's not addressing the point. Yeah, I, I am addressing the point. French had colonized Haiti for a very, very long time. And for anyone who has a bit of understanding of history knows that France did not emancipate Haiti. France lost against Haiti yeah. because the former slaves in Haiti fought against the, uh, the, the, the French people. Good for them. Haiti had to. So because of that, some French colonies in North Carolina had to be sold because they had lost Haiti. So this idea that this like, you know, European Christian, you know, movement that the emerge out of the goodness of Jesus Christ to emancipate uh, slaves. It was not just that simple. It was not just that no, simple. No, no. Now let me answer about the emancipation in Islam that you're talking about, right? So you're saying that for some strange reason, there does not, uh, there does not appear a, uh, a, a movement, a so-called movement called emancipation period. One thing that we need to understand is, first of all, that the Islamic slave trade was never centralized. It was, there was not a place where uh, slavery and the laws of slavery uh, were passed upon or, or were, were, were conducted by. Slavery was done by uh, independent merchants pre pre predominantly. Well, you can bring the evidence to disprove me. It was done predominantly by uh, 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 Islamic merchants or, 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 or noblemen. It was not a, a, a state-funded, state-focused uh, enterprise like, for example, uh, we see with the bull uh, that was passed in, in, the, in the 15th century by Pope Nicholas V, who passed legally, passed legally a bull allowing King Alfonso V of Portugal to go to Africa, state sanctioned, religiously sanctioned, to go to Africa and enslave the people. Can I reply? You will not find something similar like that in Islamic Can I history. Reply? You will find that there are merchant Can I and reply? global men who are engaged in the slavery. Can I reply? No, this is the last thing I'm wait, saying. Wait, 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 wait. That's wait, the last wait, wait. thing I'm saying. No, bro, Please, you've no. been talking a while. Uh, let me to reply. Well. Let, let me, me let me to let me finish. Let, 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 let me talk. Let, let me, me just reply no, to this because I'm going to walk away. Right. Let me finish. Let, let, land on your point. Yeah. Don't go on for another ten minutes. I won't. Right. Go I on. Promise. No. I, I need to reply to this. You so just you, lied to everybody. So, yeah. You just well, lied to everybody. We're going to bring the Googles and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just lied to everybody. Okay. Now, talking about emancipation, the same way. There is a realization and acknowledgement for slavery. I would call it acknowledgement for slavery in the Islamic text. There's also uh, a great, a great, great, great motivation on an individual level to free slaves. This is answering your question. Islam has a philosophy inbuilt in the religion that freeing slaves is the highest thing that can you I, can. Can I reply now? So that's a great motivation. Can I reply now? There's a great motivation for people to free slaves. Can I reply now? I can bring so so firstly, I'm just going to blow out of this water the idea that it, slavery was never centralized. 
get your phones out and Google the word Janissary. Slavery was so centralized within the Islamic system that they built entire armies out of slaves. Go and look at the Mamluks. The Ottomans. The, go and, exactly, the Ottomans and the Janissaries. He literally just lied to all of you and the reason why he did it is because he knows the lie. more the more the reason why he did it is not because he doesn't know about the janissaries because we've had this conversation with him before I've, I've used the example of the janissaries before he knows about the janissaries but he is saying that to you because he's hoping none of you will go and check but the reality is the reality is if you google the word janissaries you will learn about the plight of christian children that were kidnapped from their families brutalized and turned into a personal slave army of the caliph he lied to you when he said it wasn't centralized why do we know because there were slave markets in virtually every major islamic town and city publicly selling slaves do you honestly think that that could be allowed if the government wanted to suppress it of course not but the reason why you could find slave markets in every Islamic town and city throughout every Islamic caliphate for the last 1,400 years and the only group in our entire world that still today is practicing slavery where I can go and buy a black child for less than a McDonald's is in the Islamic world, in Khartoum, in North Sudan in Malawi and other places in North Africa. The only group, the only group, ladies and gentlemen, that have tried recently to re-establish slavery are Muslims. ISIS tried to re-establish slavery in the Middle East. They were doing a practice that Muslims have done for 1400 years. Do not believe the lies you have just heard. The obfuscating of the fact that the Quran permits slavery. Now he pointed out that we Christians have our own bad history with slavery. And I concede that point. Not even going to dispute it. He's absolutely right. But we Christians also have a long history of fighting against slavery. I'll give you examples from antiquity, from the Roman period. So between the years 100 to 400 AD, Christians were fighting against slavery. Saint Melania herself freed 8,000 slaves. Saint Ovidius of Gaul freed 500 slaves. Saint Chromatius, a Roman prefect under Diocletian who persecuted the church. Anyway, yeah? No, 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 I'm, I'm finishing. Yeah, let me, yeah. I will talk, yeah, let me talk. Point, I let you speak, I let you speak, yeah, let, yeah, me speak. Let, me speak. let me speak, let me speak, let me speak. Let me speak. Under Diocletian, 1,400 year, uh, 1,400 slaves. Hermes, a prefect under Tr Emperor Trajan, set free 1,200 slaves. Remember, we Christians were doing this as a minority, as a persecuted people, not as the people in power. We were doing these releasing of slaves as persecuted Christians. Saint Augustine encouraged the clergy under him to free slaves. Saint Constantine said that if you killed a slave, or sorry, if you kidnapped someone to make them a slave, you would receive the death penalty. So right from the very beginning of Christianity, and he doesn't want to listen to these points because it contradicts the narrative. He contradicts the narrative that he wants to push on genuine people who want to assume goodwill. But the reality is, Can you finish the off? reality is, Can you finish off? Muhammad bought and sold slaves. Muhammad traded two black slaves for an Arab one. He lie. gave a slave as a gift to his own daughter, what, 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 a human what, being what, as a gift. Now notice they're rattled now. They wanted me to be quiet, but notice how they're interrupting. Notice how they're interrupting because they're rattled, because they know that this exposes what they're saying. And I will bring the hadith the next time I speak. 
but, but did Jesus own slaves? Is Jesus our example? Now, I've got to raise my voice because we've got a triggered Muslim over here. No, 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 I'm still curious about your so, argument about... Yeah, wait, 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 one second. I'm so, sorry, one second. I'm, no, I'm going, no, no, I'm not, no, I've got one more point to make. I've got one more point to make. I've got one more point to make, and it's a question. It's a question. It's a question. If a Muslim today under a Sharia system organized by a caliph was to own a slave and to treat that slave well in the best possible way by owning the slave as a Muslim would he be doing anything wrong? What do you mean? I think that question was pretty obvious. Was it obvious to everyone else? Yeah, I will, let me answer to it after. Okay. I answer to it, after. it is an yeah. interesting question. Yeah, first I will answer all, it afterwards. Right? But um, you were saying about, um, so First of all, I do not appreciate that the first thing that you had to do was say I'm a liar and, and, and attack me personally, you know. We haven't had this discussion. We have a minute. discussion here. If I missed out something, it's for me to go back and answer that. Did it? you know about the Janissaries? I, do, I, I knew about okay, the Janissaries. Thank you. Okay, mismatching yeah. arguments. Let's yeah, make yeah, so you right. did know about the Janissaries? I do. I did you know, but I, I don't view them in the way you view them. So the Janissaries, for example, if we talk about slaves, slavery and slaves the, 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 the definition of a slave is someone who is subjugated and someone who is taken uh, like the janissaries so, uh, solely for the uh, uh, what's it called solely for the, uh, the the profit or the benefit of the master so the janissaries no, that's exactly what no, happened to the janissaries why are you answering i don't want you to answer let me talk well i'm just pointing no, no, out we are taught that's a perfect e to. example was, of the janissaries at least five minutes okay so so that's that's the definition of a slave. A slave is someone who is solely in uh, service or is solely there in profit and and and, and advantage for, for the master. So the janissaries that he mentioned. But especially if the slave is not free, right? Yes, and, and the slave is not free. Yeah. Like yes. the janissaries. Yeah. Well, the janissaries. It was that the janissaries came from a region in in the Balkans who were, through military, uh, 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 what's it called, activities conquered, they were conquered. And stolen. And, please, can you stop, my boy? I'll, I'll come to it. And stolen, because yeah. you're lying to people. I'm not lying. You're stop. literally obfuscating the truth you know, you know, that they were kidnapped children. I'm a liar. You were kidnapped children. Okay. He's, 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 okay. he's, he's omitting the fact that they were kidnapped children. No, they, they he's omitting they, that fact. No, no, there was a, Do you admit it? No, no, there was a system in place, there was a system in place where the families and the, 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 the Ottomans were in cohort of what was happening. That was because the Balkans were conquered at one point and there was a levy you had to give, like a tax levy. And one of the systems was to inscribe your child into the army. Now, these were That's so not what happened. What it's not what happened. Read, read. If I lie, go, life, and speak right? to, yeah. go and speak to go and speak to Bulgarian yeah. Christians or Hungarian Christians. So these That's not what happened. Weren't slaves who were working on the plantation field to levy uh, profit. Those janissaries were elite soldiers who had given a salary and had also uh, some form of, of, of autonomy in, in the Ottoman. But, but they were choice. taken. It was not exactly. Was they not were taken choice. by the parents. Was it a free choice? Uh, huh? No, no, it was a, it was a levy. Yes, but not there was a so it was like, a tax. No, they no, taxed. On, they literally on. took your child as a tax. But, but exactly. No, 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 no. That's exactly. Not true. That's not true. No, that is true. No, no, no. That is true. Go and speak to the Greeks. Go and speak to the Romanians. Go and speak to the Hungarians. for the children. No, that that's that's not true. Yeah, that's not true. So that's what I'm saying. It's not allow me to talk. Please allow me to talk. So these janissaries. There was an agreement between. You don't know the history, mate. You don't know the history. I do. You really don't. Most of them were taken, but for some families it was a good career path for their children. No, no, no. No, they were forced. No, no, it's like... You're absolutely right. They were forced. They didn't have a choice not to agree. They didn't have a choice not to agree. Yeah, you know when there's... Yeah. So what, the, what he says was some parents probably thought it was a good choice. Because there was a form of social mobility and, that, that but existed. But it was not a free choice. Yeah. Those children, so those a, parents lost their balance. faith Thank and they did much. not want to give their children up. I think they hid their children. About, unfortunately, I was trying to convey... They hid their people. children. However, however... First of all, are you Islamic yourself? Yeah, I'm a Muslim, yeah. So no. there must, must bring up some feelings. No, no. 
He celebrates it's, it. It's, it's to do with my understanding of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, the reason... So, Thank you. Islam isn't per se against slavery. Because what Islam was doing was, when, when it came, there was slavery already in existence. There was an ex existent slave system. So what Islam was doing was that, and some, some uh, scholars argue that, that it was trying to be off people of slavery <laughs> by having these individual things like the man manumission of slaves, that that's the highest thing that an individual can do. That if you have a slave, that the highest thing that you can do is to um, free a slave. Free a slave. So that's why yeah, it doesn't... That, that's really weird, right? Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't fit in in the, in, 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 in the context of like, there is a clear injunction in Islam that says slavery is forbidden. Um, the same way it, uh, sorry. it, it does with, with uh, the Europe, Western European understanding of, of slavery. And also, it has also to do with how slaves are viewed. Slave, for example, the term slavery has a very Eurocentric, uh, a very Eurocentric, uh, what's it called, uh, connotation to it. You know, slaves being the Slavic people of Eastern European uh, descent. And and, 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 and and through the English language we adopted it as a, but there are certain That's forms the word comes from. Yeah, but there are certain forms of English. servitude that we wouldn't English. say is a transatlantic slave trade. For example, the Russian the Russian serves, right? The Russian serves weren't in the classical sense slaves, right? They had their own land to work on, but they had to levy taxes again. Same thing with feudalism. So I think when we talk about these things, they're very nuanced and we have to be very careful what terms that we use. Can I can you I can jump come in. back? You can come can back. I, can, I, can I jump yeah, into this back. conversation? The, the I have a finish. Can, can I can I ask huh? the Can I jump into this conversation or do you not want to hear what I I've got to say? I will talk about it after. Like, so, uh, I want to invite him and talk to me because unfortunately say, what he's doing right now he's he's missing out huge amounts of information in his apologetic. He's missing out huge amounts of information filling you in on. He really is. He really is. So, so the reality is, he's talking about you know how Islam says free slaves. What he forgets to tell you is, the system has managed to maintain the large. It was based upon you took slaves through conquest, and so the amount of slaves coming in was always huge compared to the amount of slaves leaving. The reality is, there's real choices that we have to face. Like in the West, we're taught to be obvious. And, we're taught to be and, neutral. That's and, and our that's natural disposition. But the, the reality is that in what kind of civilization we build, uh, based very much about what its, its fundamental beings. premises are. If your fundamental premises are Islam, you have no basis to get rid of slavery. And that's why the Muslim world has never got rid of slavery. And you heard him admit that Islam has nothing against slavery. In other words, okay, slavery is perpetual. Your, your free assumption that Christianity is based on equality, I do not quite get I, I, I didn't make that argument. No, but if you turn it around... So let me, let, let me yeah. deal with that. So, so the Christian faith, as I tried to demonstrate, we, we abandoned our slavery by choice, not by force. Yeah. No one forced Britain. Britain was the superpower of its time. It gave up slavery by choice. No one was big enough to force us to do it. But, but the point, and we've been doing that all the way through history. You go and look, the first time slavery was abolished in England was in 1068, when William the Conqueror conquered England. He said to the Saxons, slavery is not compatible with Christianity, and he abolished slavery. Based on the, the yeah. assumption of the equality of yeah. people. Yeah. Based on... Amongst Christians, but they could, yeah. they yes. could enslave non-Christians. So, let's come to that. Let's come to that. Let's come to that. Let's come to that. No, let's come to that. Because it's true that the abolition of slavery certainly started from amongst Christians, but logically, Christians built on that principle to include non-Christians as well, which is why we abolish slavery even for non-Christians as well. And I want to show you the biblical basis. Now, remember, he said that the Quran does not teach against slavery. But the book of Philemon, which is one of the principal texts of European civilization, because it's in the Bible, and the Bible is a principal text of European civilization, says this, right? Philemon was a slave owner. And Paul was writing to Philemon, the slave owner, about a slave called Onesimus. Read, this is what he says, and I'll just highlight the key points. Therefore, this is Paul speaking, though I, Paul, have enough confidence in Christ to order you to do what is proper, yet 
for love's sake, rather, I appeal to you. So he's saying, I have the authority to command you to do something that is right. Now listen to what he says is the right thing to do. I appeal to you for my child, Zimus, the slave, whom I have begotten in my imprisonment, who formerly was useless to you, but now is useful both to you and to me. So he's saying, I could command you to do the right thing about Onesimus, but I'm not, I'm appealing to you. I'm appealing about Onesimus because he's useful. But without your consent, I did not want to do anything so that your goodness would not be in effect by compulsion, but of your own free will. So he's appealing to some sense of right that Philemon already has. And he says this, for perhaps he was for this reason separated from you for a while, that you would have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. So Paul is literally saying to Philemon, on, on, Onesimus, I'm sending back to you, but don't receive him as a slave, receive him as a brother. And that is a book that was written 2,000 years ago. The Quran was written 1,400 years ago and it establishes slavery. This really makes a difference about the kind of society that you have. If we build our laws on Philemon, we end up getting rid of slavery. If we build our laws on the Quran, we end up re-establishing slavery. And this brother is relying on your temperament to be neutral and objective to obfuscate the issues and to hide facts. Well, the Romans also had some sort of belief that humans are equal because in the Romans they enslaved people, yep. especially people from other ethnicities and yep. so on from other regions. Yeah. But they also had the concept that you could earn your freedom after and uh, years of serving as a, as a yeah, because the, the 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 kind of slavery that existed in antiquity but that was even before Christianity. Yes, but so the what, what is the concept based on? Because the the con the idea of slavery in Roman antiquity was different from the idea of chattel slavery. That where the what well, that's, when we think of slavery, we think of chattel slavery. Yeah, in the boats. And by the way, Muslims did that to a million Europeans. A million Europeans. Yeah? So let's not forget that. That happened. Right? And they didn't give it up by choice like we did. They didn't fight wars against other Muslims to stop it like we did. We forced them to stop their slave trade at gunpoint. That's something to remember. It isn't the case that all religions are equal, and it isn't the case that all values are equal or all beliefs are equal. On this question, it's very clearly the case that you have a right choice and a wrong choice, a good choice and a bad choice. Based on my own Western uh, raising and based on my own Western beliefs. Well, I would just ask you, would you like to be a slave? No, of course not. Would you like to own a slave? No. Right, so it's more than just a Western upbringing, it's based upon a natural law. I guarantee no slave owner wanted to be a slave himself. But based on the same Christian beliefs... No, objective natural law, that's what I'm appealing to. Slave owners... That's my point, no. it's subjective. No. We think that if all humans are equal, but if you look at the position of some human beings, like women, they have not been equal, they have not been... Uh, political rights, yeah. and we have, could not be voted, you had, uh, yeah. even in the, in the Christian tradition of a thousand so, years, so let me, other yeah. people like uh, homosexuals and so on, they are not seen as equal human beings, so even in Christian... Actually, tradition. actually, th th we've got to make a distinction between social qualities, i.e. That, those that are of social construct, and the, the, the dignity that every human being has. Now, the very idea that a human being is born with dignity is a Christian idea. It, it's absolutely a Christian idea. It didn't exist. You're born with an equal dignity. Exactly. You're created, not just that you're created by God. But if you're not baptized, you're not equal. I'm literally going to tell you what we believe. I'm literally going to tell you. Christians believe that you are created in the image of God and that imatio deo is what makes you equal even before baptism. Even before In other words, the gift that God has given you is that he has created you in 
image and that's not dependent on anything else at all even if you're not born in a christian even family. if you're not born in a christian family my muslim brother is made in the image of god and that gives him an equality with me in dignity which incidentally i know is not reciprocated in islam in islam i am always less of a human being under sharia law i am a dhimmi a second class citizen legally it's like a religious apartheid this is the history of the church we know what happened to us because of the enlightenment europeans have forgotten their own history we have forgotten what has happened in european history what has happened all you remember is what the liberals tell you and the liberals teach you a filtered yeah. history that encourages you to be embarrassed and ashamed of who you are. Okay. Going back to the equality. Go, yeah, so, so social, social, social equality comes from political, economic and social constructs. So not everyone is the same level of wealth. Not everyone has the same level of authority. These are social and political things. But when one of the things that made Christianity radical in the Roman age was that slaves and masters come together at the same feast, the same communion table, and they would receive the same sacrament. In the same church. In the same fellowship. But they would not sit at the same bank in the church. No, 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 no. You're talking about something from the 1800s. I'm talking about, I'm talking about something that goes back. This was why Christianity was so shocking to the Roman world, is that men, slave and free, and women, slave and free, sat as equals at the Agape Feast. That's so shocking to the world. It was radical in a way that we can't comprehend because of the success of Christianity. We take that idea for granted. But it's not something that was inherent. But the reality is and this is what I mean is that there really is a choice to be made do we want to build a civilization on Christianity or Islam or something else because if we build it on Islam we go to a position where I will always be a second-class citizen always always and that has been the experience of Christians kind of limited choices you're presenting me right now no on Christianity or something else I said or something else or, 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 or else but the point is the point is if we just go through life being neutral about choices we might find ourselves stumbling into choices into which we disagree you know the reality is I mean you know like there's been many examples in history where societies have taken the wrong turn because people saw the right choice but didn't fight for it and we should fight against any idea that preaches and teaches that slavery can be normalized you heard from his own lips from his own lips that slavery is not condemned in Islam you saw an example where slavery Yeah, Malawi, Sudan. Um, why don't we imposter It's a. I, I agree. I think we should. I think we should. I think the reason why liberals have such hang-ups about what we did in our own slave trade and colonialism that we are now hesitant to impose justice where justice should be imposed. Yeah. I think it's the same argument. Like, uh, it's not only about or slavery, it's also about political value, and Malawi is not important, not economically. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not important. I totally agree. We don't, it doesn't, in, in it doesn't impact us, it impact us, it doesn't impact us, and that's why, and that's why it's ignored, you know? Yeah. So, one, one second. Yeah, yeah, I know. No, no one second. You didn't need one second to me. So, 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 thank you. Thank you. So in, in terms of the, what you're going to see, right, is an appeal to the 99-1 rule. That's what we Christians call it. 99-1 rule. So he's going to say something to you in the hope you watch it. What I want you to check is not just what Muslims say about Islam, but what non-Muslims have said about Islam. And look at the evidence, particularly on this question of slavery. 
beyond the filtered history that the Liberals present about Christianity and look at what Christians say about our own beliefs and our own history, right? And make your own judgments. You did hear from his own lips, he said it to your face, Islam does not condemn slavery. You heard it from my lips with a textual proof, Christianity does condemn slavery. And then because of that spiritual freedom, Christians then went on to fight to set peoples free for 2,000 years and still are today, set slaves free. Well, thank you very much for your enthusiasm. What's your name, bro? Marcel. I just want to give you a gift, Marcel. Do you have a Bible? Uh, at home. Oh, you do? <laughs> Brilliant. I'd like to give you a different gift then, just before you go. Sir, I, w I, just talked to you, um, I just talked to your wife. We had a very beautiful conversation. And because you asked me the question about my new, my new mission and, and, and Islam, and I would love to meet you first. Um, unfortunately, who knows if I'm going to meet you again? Probably not. But if there's something you need to remember, we... we Oh, yeah. the previous so basically we ended up starting off a conversation about um, again about the fact that Muslims can't show me the criterion by which they choose their scholars um, but yet so much of Islam depends upon the opinion of scholars and it demonstrates that there's no such thing as Sharia law there's just Sharia opinions and lots of them and they all disagree um, but then we ended up getting into the, the kind of appeal to look at Islamic greatness, the greatness of our civilization. Well, if you're going to make that argument, then let's look at all the injustices of Islamic civilization. The fact that for 1400 years, Islam has constituted bodily slavery. And unlike Christian slave trade that was given up by free choice and without force by Christian civilizations, the Islamic slave trade continued until those same Christian civilizations forced the Muslims to stop slavery. And that speaks volumes. We need to remember that one million Christians, and that's a conservative estimate, the chances are it's a lot higher, that one million Christians were stolen from Europe by the Islamic slave trade. And that injustice was not righted by any internal movement within Islam, but by external force applied by Christians who repented of their own practice of slavery freely and from a position of power. And that difference is because in Philemon, we talk about embracing slaves as brothers, but in the Quran, it talks about using humans as slaves.